Welcome to another video service of the First Presbyterian Church of Alexander City, Alabama. I'm Susan McCrispin, and I'm an elder and a choir member here. This church is such a wonderful place, and one day soon we'll get back together. But in the meantime, it brings to mind the connections that are so important, because that's what we truly miss, is the connections here with our congregation and, each, and our loved ones. So in the spirit of connectivity, if you get a minute, drop the church a line, send an email, leave a funny message on the phone, but also not just maybe with the church, but also with each other. We've all got our directories now. So flip through that directory and give somebody a surprise call and just say, hey, I'm surprising you. So. Uh, say hello. We are the body of Christ and we need to take care of each other just like he would like just like he takes care of us. So once again, stay connected, keep your spirits up and we'll see you very soon. Well, hello to the moons. How are you doing? Hello. We're Very doing good, Bruce. Doing How are you? Uh, thanks for inviting me to come over and, uh, and showing folks your place. Glad to have you. We were talking earlier, and uh, this has been a difficult time for all of us. Oh, yes. We've been scared and staying at home a lot and have just now started venturing out a little bit. Keith's been out more than I have, but uh, it's been quite different. We haven't been to anything where there were, you know, lots of people. Both of our kids are out of the house now, so we've got the empty nest syndrome, so uh, that's been uh, what we've been trying to get used to, so we're, we're adjusting. It's yeah. just the two of us, so uh, it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. Randy Lee, our daughter, is uh, you know works in a hospital, so she's around COVID patients, so she has to be very, very careful with everything that she does. And you said uh, Jacob is uh, cautious. He's very cautious about yeah. Yeah. his contacts. Yes, yeah. he is. His. And what's he doing now? He... Um, he is uh, out for the summer because he's a teacher and um, he teaches in Phoenix City and um, but he's very cautious and scolds us if he finds out that we've been out anywhere so he thinks we should stay at home all the time during this. 
Yeah, because he'll say, remember, Dad, you're 65. Yeah, he constantly reminds us of our ages. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely miss church. Yes. Um, that's for sure. Just uh, pray for our end to the pandemic soon so that, you know, so we can get back to church. We miss our church family. Absolutely. Well, God bless you both. Thank you. You too. Through 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work, tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The picture here is Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha asking a question of Jesus. Don't you care? Mary at the Lord's feet, taking in his word. No doubt what place his word lies in her life. And so today, let's consider this picture. Let's consider Mary's place. In verse 39, in the Greek, it says Mary Parakathiso uh, sat right at his feet listening to his word. Uh, how she values it. And the surprise is this is a woman. It was not terribly inappropriate, but uh, surprising in those days. One rabbi wrote, you may as well burn the scriptures as to teach them to a woman. Well, it was not forbidden to teach women, but unusual. But today, today most church members are women. Some men say religion is for women and girls in their little circles and teas. And, and the word of God is not for hardworking, hairy-chested men. Just see how it is uh, almost reversed from Jesus' day. Men! In what place do you sit? Do you draw near to his feet? Receptive, yearning. Well, this same Mary later 
We see her in Bethany. In what place do we find her again? At Jesus' feet, anointing his feet with ointment. And then again, when do we see her again? We see her in John 11. At what, in what place is Mary? It says, Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, and she fell at his feet. Men, what place do you take? Do you think the Bible, when reading it, interferes with the things that you need to do? That it's not a work to which the Lord called you to sit? at his feet. Man to man, what are you doing? Are you waiting for the trumpet to sound? Mary's place. Next, let's look at the picture. We see Martha's pressure. Martha's pressure. She works to make a good meal, serving the Lord as her sister just sits there. Potatoes boiling over, the goose baking, the, the, the Martha has only two hands. In the Gospel of John, it says Jesus loved these sisters. So they were close, they were friends, and they could talk with ease to one another. So don't be surprised if Martha snaps at Jesus, Lord, don't you care? In Greek, Martha tells Jesus, my sister departed without me to come in here to listen to you, saying, Jesus, pay attention to my burden because of my irresponsible sister. So that's, uh, that's Martha's pressure. Let's look at now Mary's portion. Mary's portion. Jesus says to Martha, you're anxious, you're troubled over many things, Martha. And the casserole needs serving. The turkey's roasted. The, the dressing and the cake are ready. Martha is going to serve a lot of dishes. Portions, the Greek says. Portions of food. Jesus uses that word, playing on that word. You have many portions, but only one portion is needed above all. Uh, Jesus is comparing a portion of food at the meal with a portion of heavenly food from him. 42 says, Mary chose a good portion, the good portion, one that feeds her forever, never to be taken away. Over in Mark 3, you might remember Jesus said certain desires for other things enter in and choke out the word. So even good things can choke out what is vital. In the comic strip, Peanuts, Linus was to be, to be in a Christmas program at church. So Lucy asked him, do you know your part at the Christmas program? And Linus said, oh, I know it backwards and forwards. And then he, as he walked out the door, he said, I'll see you in church. I'm going early. And as he walked down the street, uh, re he kept repeating his part over and over. Every time he said it, he would, he would comment to himself, oh, you have a great memory. You have a wonderful memory. And next, we see Linus walking back in the house, and Lucy says, I thought you were going to church. And he said, I forgot where it is. You see, Linus knew a good thing, but forgot the most important thing. Next, look at our priority in this picture. Verses 40 and 42. In verse 40, Martha said, Mary departed without me from the kitchen. The Greek word departed is a nautical term. It means to set sail without your passenger. Uh, cut a lipo. Uh, cut a lipo is the Greek word. Abandoned me. Shipped off, shipped out, and abandoned me. But ah, when Jesus repeated Martha in verse 42, he did not say cut a lipo. He said, guy. Mary did not abandon Martha. Mary, 
chose Jesus. Mary made the Lord's word her priority at the time. And this does not say skip supper and go read the Bible. It says you may think that you can walk with God and be who He wants you to be without His word. That's what this says. But you can't. There's no shortcut. Because the Lord has things to say to you, draw near to His feet. Pray with me. O God who reveals Himself in His Son, we draw near to You, our Teacher, through Jesus, for living bread. Amen. Thank you for spending time with us today on our video service. And until we can meet again, just stay positive and also help us out with your tithes and offerings if you can. Please send them to the First Presbyterian Church, P.O. Box 96, Alex City, Alabama, 35011. And once again, I look forward to seeing you soon. And in the meantime, call me. I don't know. <laughs> they quit the train.